All right, boys and girls, it's time for our story. So if you want to hear a story, say I do. If you want to hear a story, say I do. If you want to hear a story, then you're sitting nice and quiet. If you want to hear a story, say I do. The title of our book today is It's Mine. Our author is Leo Liani. I want you to take a second and look at the front cover and think about that title, It's Mine. I wonder what this book is gonna be about. Hmm. Let's open up. Oh, and here's our title page, It's Mine. See that frog again in it. What's he trying to get? I wonder what he's, um, why he's reaching for that bug. In the middle of Rainbow Pond, there was a small island. Smooth pebbles lined its beaches, and it was covered with ferns and leafy weeds. On the island lived three quarrelsome frogs. Quarrelsome means that they fought and they argued a lot. Named Milton, Rupert, and Lydia. They quarreled and quibbled from dawn to dusk. They fought all day. Stay out of the pool, yelled Milton. The water is mine. Get off the island, shouted Rupert. The earth is mine. The air is mine, screamed Lydia as she leaped to catch a butterfly. And so it went. One day, a large toad appeared before them. I live on the other side of the island, he said, but I can hear you shouting, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, all day long. There is no peace because of your endless bickering. Bickering means fighting. You can't go on like this. With that, the toad slowly turned around and hopped away through the weeds. No sooner had he left than Milton ran off with a large worm. The others hopped after him. Worms are for everybody, they cried. But Milton croaked defiantly. Not this one, it's mine. Hmm, I wonder if they're being very kind to each other. Suddenly the sky darkened and a rumble of distant thunder circled the island. Rain filled the air and the water turned to mud. The island grew smaller and smaller as it was swallowed up by the rising flood. That means that the water is rising. There's so much water that it's going over the island and making the island kind of disappear. The frogs felt, what do you think? They were scared. Desperately, they clung to the few slippery stones that still rose above the wild, dark water. But soon, these two began to disappear. I wonder what's going to happen next. Take a second and make a prediction. Let's see if you're correct. There was only one rock left, and there the frogs huddled, trembling from cold and fright. Trembling meant they were shaking. But they felt better now that they were together, sharing the same fears and hopes. Hmm, are they saying, it's mine, it's mine anymore? Little by little, the flood subsided and went away. The rain fell gently and then stopped altogether. But look, that large rock that had saved them was no rock at all. What was it? <laughs> you saved us, shouted the frogs when they recognized the toad. The next morning, the water had cleared. Sun rays chased silver minnows on the sandy bottom of the pond. Joyfully, the frogs jumped in and side by side, they swam all around the island. Together they leaped after the swarms of butterflies that filled the air. I notice that they're not saying it's mine anymore. It looks like they're learning to share with one another. 
And later, when they rested in the weeds, they felt happy in a way they had never been before. Why do you think they're feeling happy now? It feels kind of good to share, doesn't it? Isn't it peaceful, said Milton? And isn't it beautiful, said Rupert? And do you know what else, said Lydia? No, what, the others asked. It's ours, she said. The end. Thanks for listening, boys and girls. Maybe you can think of today some ways that you can share. Maybe you and your brothers and sisters, if you have them, are kind of like the frogs in this story. Thanks. Have a good day. See you later.